in which driver you can even drive, but you have to either fly or get a boat of a trip of three hours to reach the other football club on the other island. This is not Barcelona versus Real Madrid or the Real Oviedo versus Gijon. This is the Canary Island Derby, the battle between Gran Canaria and Tenerife Islands. This is CD Tenerife versus UD Las Palmas. Welcome to Wife Weeks Around the World, I'm your host Budi. Well, you can't imagine where thousands of Europeans celebrate their vacation on the Canary Islands to flee the winter on the mainland. You should think those islands inhabitants are to having too much sun or having tourists on their doorstep. The two biggest islands, Gran Canaria and Tenerife, have each other to mock about, and it goes even deeper. And yes, there's football rivalry between the clubs respectively in the Derby or Derby de Canario. So let's hop into the grounds. Both clubs are based on the offshore Canary archipelago. The Canary Islands are situated just off the Moroccan coast, meaning these teams have more air miles than average club in the Spanish league during the course of the season. There are exactly 62 kilometers in between Tenerife and Gran Canaria Islands, and it takes two and a half hours by ferry, normally. But include all the security and transport from the ferry to the stadium, it can take even four hours. The Canary Islands location is on the northwest coast of Africa, near Morocco. Tenerife and Gran Canaria are the biggest islands. Chile Tenerife Grounds is obviously on the island of Tenerife and located in the north of the capital's island Santa Cruz, a city of over 200,000 people. Heliodoro Rodriguez Lopez, the name of the stadium, is called after the important player and chairman of Chile Tenerife's history and has 22,824 seats. If we go more east on Gran Canaria, in the capital Las Palmas, with a population of nearly 400,000 people, there is UD Las Palmas ground, Estadio Gran Canaria. Of course, the stadium refers to the island itself and has a capacity of 32,400 seats. Let's jump into the clubs. First, CD Tenerife. Tenerife stands for Club Deportivo Tenerife SAD officially or CD Tenerife or Tenerife for short. The clubs got different nicknames. Tete, Cicareros, Insulares, Blancvisulets. Fans of Tenerife are called Cicareros because in the early days the inhabitants of a small fishing village called Santa Cruz, later the capital of Tenerife, consumed Cicareros, an Atlantic horse mackerel, as a main part of their diet. Other inhabitants of Tenerife and the Canary Islands use the moniker as a pejorative name. But finally, the inhabitants of Santa Cruz adapted the name. The club has been founded on November 21, 1912 as a sporting club, Tenerife, which has come about a merger between two more football clubs. That similar story we have in 1912. In 1922, the club changed its name into Club Deportivo Tenerife. The name still carries today. So, what about the emblem? The club's quest is similar to the coat of arms of the city of Santa Cruz and Tenerife, with only difference of the white cross and the letters CDT. The club colors refers to its emblem and the islands of Tenerife, white and blue. White stands for the islands and blue for the ocean and sea. Clubs are, unfortunately, Tenerife never won an important title, not in La Liga or the lower divisions or in the National Cup. If you count Copa de Canaria in, the Canary Cup, they won four times. Still, they deserve honorable mentions when they reached the semi-finals of the Europa League by losing against Schalke 04 and the semi-finals of the Copa del Rey. So, some notable players are Roy Mackay, Juan Antonio Pizzi, Fernando Redondo, and Oscar Alberto Tertizia. What about UD Las Palmas? UD Las Palmas do not confuse with La Palma other Canary Islands is established on August 22, 1949, after a merger of five football clubs on the island. Chile Gran Canaria, Atletica Club de Football, Real Club Victoria, Arenas Club, and Marino Football Club. So that was a lot. What the main reason was making a club that is strong enough to keep the Canary player on the island and not seek the career elsewhere on the mainland. Therefore, it called Union Deportiva Las Palmas, Unified Sports Las Palmas. Another nickname is the Pio Pio. It is the chant mimicking the bird song of the Canary. The emblem, you can't call it an emblem, it looks like more a coat of arms. The badge got a yellow scrolls on top with the club's name, city and archipelago. In the middle, you see the municipal coat of arms on Las Palmas. Nice feature, this coat of arms is approved by the city's mayor. 
Underneath, you have the five crests of the clubs which united in 1949 to create the club. Victoria, Arenas, De Deportivo, Marino and Atletico. A smaller white score above them displays the city motto. Segura, Tiene La Palma. In Spanish football, many clubs possess royal patronage and thus they are permitted to use the prefix Real in the name and use an image of a Spanish crown. Las Palmas does not have such patronage, but tops its crest with the Spanish crown due to the patronage held by Royal Club Victoria, one of the former football clubs. Club's colors are yellow and blue. Blue because of the sea, like Tenerife, but yellow stands for Canary Yellow. The club is not only in numbers, but also bigger in results and titles. Second tier and Segunda Division B, the third tier in Spanish football, six times. They almost won La Liga in 1968-69 and won the Winners Up, as well the Winners Up in Copa del Rey in 1978. International, they had a few appearances in the UEFA Cup, they do won the Copa de Canaria four times as well. So some famous players from Las Palmas are Juan Carlos de Valeron, Victor Machine Perez and Vinny Samways. So what about the rivalry between those islands? That's what I like to say this kind of stories about this rivalry, because it doesn't have to be in the top league. The class is mostly in the Segunda División B, the third tier in Spanish football or La Liga 2. The stories are just compelling, just like any other club in the bigger leagues, because it is about two different islands, two different clubs and even two different cultures. The rivalry is so heated and is weighted in the top 50 of the world's football derbies. So where does the rivalry actually come from? It goes actually deeper than just two islands. We have to go back in the first decade of the 19th century. In 1812, the Canary Islands become a Spanish province. It rooted the competition between the two biggest islands, actually between the two cities, Santa Cruz de Tenerife and Las Palmas, the Gran Canaria, becoming the capital led by the local elites. The rivalry become so fierce on political level, the Spanish government decide to split the province in two to get rid of the problem. So the island group split two different provinces in the province of Las Palmas and the Santa Cruz de Tenerife province. Each province has their own capital. For the province of Las Palmas, it became Las Palmas and the Santa Cruz de Tenerife province, it became Santa Cruz. The Canary Islands as a whole have their own culture, but in between islands there is a difference and also some competition. While Tenerife is the biggest island, is the more visited one and flocking with tourists. Gran Canaria is more laid back. Both islands claim have the best carnival festivities of entire Spain. And when it is about beer, it goes definitely beyond football. Islanders make a statement to drink their own local beer. Gran Canarians residents drink tropical beer, while people from Tenerife drink Dorada beer. Until the 1990s, the rivalry was quite and friendly to be the king of the Canaries. But there was one game in particular in the 90s, everything sets off between sets of fans and has been bitter ever since. In the mid 90s, the fans took fireworks amongst the fans that took the tension to new heights, like throwing fireworks to the opponent's stands on the pitch and of course abusive chants and rioting. Going on derby day from one island to the other takes over three, three and a half and maybe four hours. Normally a ferry should take you there in one and a half, two hours. But if you arrive, a mass police force awaits you. Security checks and slow tour from the docks to the stadium. The match is that serious why police and security are flew in from the mainland of Spain. The Tenerife fans has a strange tradition to mock with the Las Palmas fans. Stuffed canaries, of course fake canaries. Canaries being the symbol of Gran Canaria and Las Palmas are hung on lampposts and attached with firecrackers to set it off in an attempt to go with their rivals. While La Palma fans cheer a wall of sound by chanting Pio Pio, the mimicking sound of the canary. However, in both stadiums, fireworks are banned. It is not entirely safe to wear or flying debris, cookies, money, chairs, coins, whatever. Not only off the pitch, it gets heated. Also on the pitch, several tackles, injured players, morals, and various other incidents. Like the famous tunnel incident in 2015, where a fight broke out between the players after the game in a tunnel that connects the dressing rooms and the football pits. The ultras of Las Palmas are the Ultra Naciente and the Serie Tenerife called Amara Sur, an international supporters group, and the Frente Juan Cuisu. So let's check about the teams in between. Let's go head to head. 
The most matches are mostly in the Segunda Division. One time in recent history, the games was in the Primera Division. Overall, in total, so far, are 64 matches. Tenerife won 30 times and Las Palmas won 29 times, and 21 are tied up. Tenerife largest victory is 3-0 in the 2013-2014 season, and Las Palmas' biggest win is 1-3 in 2001-2002 season, the only game in the Primera Division. So, final whistle. So, in conclusion, if you ever think visit a derby totally different by flying 5 up to 6 hours from the European mainland to the holiday destination in the region of islands with a good weather and 30 degrees centigrade or above, and you even want to more heat it up, forget those volcanoes. Go to one of those games. You shouldn't regret it. So, what do you think about this rivalry or derby? So, post them below in comments and let me know which kind of underrated or unknown other football derby I should talk about. For now, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I see you at the next rivalry.